So we're going to look at naturalistic literature and we're going to kind of use realism as our way to compare so you can kind of see how it's different and it's evolved from the last unit. Keep in mind, naturalism doesn't mean nature. Just because the word nature is in there doesn't mean it's about nature. That was transcendentalism. This isn't about nature. Um, so keep that in mind as you proceed. So the literature movements we've talked about at this time period include realism, regionalism and local color and next is going to be naturalism. So the difference between realism is that essentially um, it's literature from 1860 to 1900 that was written by a very different group of Americans writing about you know life in America and what it was like from different perspectives. Naturalism includes writers who believe that there are laws that govern us as humans and that because of those laws we can be studied and, and understood and our behavior can be understood. You see behavioral psychology at this time start to um, rise. Um, so these writers believed that people are governed by their instincts and their passions as well as the way in which the characters lives are governed by forces of heredity and environment. So our family ties help create who we are and that we are also forces of our own environment kind of dealing with the places we grew up and where we're at and what's around us. So realistic characters, it was really more about um, the choices they had to make, not necessarily the plot and the action. For Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, it was really about the decision to um, mess with the bridge. Should Peyton Farquhar mess with the bridge? And he chose to. He made that choice, and then, of course, he was punished for it. So that was what it was about for realistic characters. And their class was important, um, but generally covered your middle class, and you had plausible events. Um, the style was done in a non-sensational, non-dramatic way. It was just written, hey, here's what happened. Um, written in a realistic manner. The diction was natural vernacular if it wasn't regional, and it was often comic, satirical, or even matter-of-fact in tone. The characters for naturalism, however, are almost always ill-educated and lower-class characters, and their lives are completely governed by the forces of heredity, instinct, and passion. And they attempt multiple times to exercise free will, um, but they can't because these things like heredity and their environment and economic status, that all hinders them from, from having these choices they can make. So their free will is kind of an illusion in that way. Social Darwinism and other theories were used to help to explain their fates to the reader. So that kind of idea of survival of the fittest in society. The setting and plot is generally an urban setting. Jack London is our exception. Um, and it was called a clinical panoramic slice of life drama that's often a chronicle of despair. It kind of just gets worse and worse as it goes and you think, wow, this situation for this character just can't get any worse and then boom there it is it gets worse and then worse so the themes include uh, man against nature man against himself as characters struggle to retain a veneer of civilization despite external pressures that threaten to release the brute within essentially we are all animals and we have a thin layer of civility that we keep up but when push comes to shove and we are backed into a corner and we have to fight to survive, we will become animals because that's what we really are deep within. Uh, the forces of heredity and environment as they affect and afflict individual lives is a theme. And then an indifferent and deterministic God and universe, which is called deism. Um, so deists believe that God created the world and he spun it, put it into place, and he said, good luck, I'm out. And you could pray, and you can ask for help, but at no point will God intervene, because he doesn't need to. He, he doesn't care necessarily about what happens uh, with his people. His job was to create the earth, and he did so. Um, as for how it ends and how people's lives go, that's not really his deal. So this is kind of a, a world that has God but not a helpful God, and that free will is just an illusion. So you have your universal themes, all important. 
Man versus man is when you have one character creating a direct problem for another. Man versus society is when one character is in conflict with a group of the va or the values of a group. Man versus nature is when one character is in conflict with a natural force or part of nature. Man versus himself is when a character is struggling with a personal decision, value, or moral. We saw that a lot within the realistic literature movement. And man versus machine, a character is struggling with the power of machines or technology. So just to recap. Realistic characters use everyday language, have everyday problems, and they live in middle-class homes, whereas naturalistic characters have little education, they live in poor conditions, they are usually lower class, they have desperate situations, they are victims of circumstance, and they use language common to the situation. For situations, the realists have little action, but focus on those decisions that the protagonist has to make. Uh, watching Louise Mallard upstairs kind of coming to grips with her husband's death but also coming to grips with the fact that she was relieved about her husband's death. That was the key part of that story was about what happened to her in that room and that change that happened. However, naturalistic situations will portray the world as cruel. It is unfair to the characters. Often again occurs in an urban setting and will focus on human suffering. So naturalism can be thought of as realism on steroids. It's like realism to the extreme. It is your terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day magnified and spread out every day of your life until it just gets worse and worse and worse. That's naturalism. So some key pieces of information to know for this unit. Economic factors include uh, the role of money and how money plays a role and can impact other situations. Atavism is animal-like behavior, the brute within getting out, sometimes literally genetic regression. I think about the Hulk when I think about atavism. Heredity is your family or genetic traits playing a role. Your environment is the physical and situational surroundings around you and how those can play a part. Instinct is done without thinking. It's a gut reaction or feeling. It's an unlearned behavior and it's impulsive. You just do it. Sometimes you have a feeling or you just know within your soul what's right. And then last, deism is that God does not intervene with human affairs. He just lets it go. So basically naturalistic literature is going to be dark and sad and uh, will focus on suffering and um, people may ask for help and, and seek others to assist them but in this world it's not something that exists and they are the only ones who can help themselves and they are governed by all these forces that they cannot control so a really interesting unit of literature not necessarily the most sunshiny but very very interesting thanks <laughs>